Okay, let's talk about brain cancer. Now, before we talk about brain cancer, let's remind ourselves of a couple things about cancer. First of all, the cancer is named, is typically named for the tissue from which there is uncontrolled growth. Growth. So, for example, if there's uncontrolled growth of a lung cell, that's a lung tumor. Or if there's uncontrolled growth of a colon cell, that's a colon tumor. That's colon cancer. The neurons don't divide. They're terminally differentiated. They are undividing. And so there are no neuronal cancers. Doesn't happen. What are there? So you can get cancer in the cranium where the brain is, and that is what's called brain cancer. It's not uh, a cancer of the neurons. So there are two basic possibilities. There are two basic things that happen. One is that you can get a metastasis from a peripheral origin. So the metastases that tend to invade the, the cranium, become brain cancer, are the most common uh, malignant tumors, and those are, in the United States, breast cancer, lung cancer, and skin melanoma. And the, the rest of the cancers also invade the brain, basically uh, as to, in the proportion in which they are common. So how, how, do, these, how do these get past the, the not only the dura, but the um, blood-brain barrier, which is formed by the PIA. How do they get past that? We don't know. But what it looks as though is that once these uh, cancers have metastasized, and they meta a metastasizing cancer is a malignant cancer, a cancer that stays in C2 is a, is a benign uh, uh, tumor. So these malignant tumors, they throw off these migratory cancer cells that are going to go and look for more places to, to land. And they're going to continually attack. The, this is the way I think about it. They continually attack the blood-brain barrier. Some small, tiny proportion of them get through. And then you have a metastasized uh, tumor within the cranium. Now, the effect of a lung cancer cell and the effect of a breast cancer cell are not predictable. It's not predictable by the type of cell it is. It is predictable only by where it lands. And basically, where these metastases land is random. And so they're going to just land in various places in the brain. All of a sudden, you're going to have a symptom, a weird symptom that tells you that that part of the brain might have um, a problem, and that problem might be due to a tumor. Getting a metastasis inside the brain is a turning point. The median survival from, a, uh, uh, from the time that um, a, a metastasis is detected inside the cranium is less than a year. Uh, a five-year survival is, is relatively unknown. Uh, so this is a turning point. It tells the individual and the individual's loved ones that uh, long-term survival is extraordinarily unlikely and, um, and they should plan for that. They now, the other type of brain cancer that can happen is what's called a primary intracranial tumor. This is a tumor that arises from a cell type that is found within the cranium, inside the PIA, inside or, or inside, the, inside the cranium, let's put it that way. So what are these? These can be tumors that have, um, whose origin are, is from the meninges. So for example, there are things called meningiomas. And I think I have, so here's a picture of a meningioma. This is a CT scan. And what you can see is, here's the skull, this white area is a skull. Then there's the dura. And you can see coming off of the dura, this is in fact, the, the cell type that has um, gone out of control here is the arachnoid, but it's coming from the outside. It's coming from the, the meninges, and it's invading the, the um, nervous system. Now, these, are, these may be removable. They may be in a spot where one can remove them, and they may be localized to that spot.
in which case these are survivable. Um, an, another um, a relatively common intracranial tumor is, is one from pituitary gland cells. So these are called pituitary adenomas. And pituitary adenomas are not, are, are, are about 15% uh, of intracranial tumors. They can be removed by going up through the nose into the cella turcica where the pituitary is. Um, uh, another type is uh, a rare type of, of glandular cancer is a, um, uh, is a pinealoma, so a cancer of the pineal gland. And then there are a lot of glio gliomas, um, cancers that are of uh, glial cells. And so these fit into the most common being astrocytomas. Uh, uh, there are rarely oligodendro oligodendromas. I think that's how you say it. And um, there are also what are often called, or used to be called anyway, neuromas, which are actually schwannomas. These are um, cancers of the Schwann cells. And uh, of the, a particular, uh, particularly common one is called the, is the vestibular schwannoma, which is also often referred to in the literature as an acoustic neuroma or a vestibular neuroma. So these are all non-neuronal uh, cells. They're glandular cells, meningeal cells, uh, or uh, glial, glial cells that have uh, uh, that have um, reproduced, have started to divide um, in an uncontrolled fashion. One of the, diff the the one that's the most difficult to survive or is not survivable is glioblastoma multiform, where the the tumor actually spreads through the nervous system, uh, spreads through the brain. But most of these intracranial tumors are what is called benign, meaning they are not spreading, they are not metastasizing. Now, benign in a cancer way means that they don't, they don't metastasize, but it doesn't mean that it's benign to have it because we have a, a, a an unforgiving cranial vault. You cannot expand the tissue within the cranium without problems. So a benign tumor can kill you if it's inside the cranium. And so these have to be removed. They have to be either removed or shrunk using, uh, for, for example, radiofrequency lesioning. Um, and if they are either cannot be removed or if they come back repeatedly, then there start to be um, more problems. There is a final type of uh, intracranial tumor, and it's prevalent only in children. And it is a tumor of progenitor cells. So where are progenitor cells found in children? They're found in the hindbrain, making the cerebellum. And so there are a group of cerebellar astrocytomas that are, um, or medulloblastomas of the progenitor cell that are common in children and never seen in, in adults. In the next section, we're gonna look at problems that can arise from tumors or, or uh, either tumors or autoimmune disorders that affect the nervous system, um, but are not affecting it through uh, a space-occupying tumor.